last take because I'm tired of this. Okay, hello everybody. My name is Opal. I'm a senior on the Raceback Aviation High School Green Energy Team. And last year I led our solar panel project. And right now I'm just going to give you a brief overview, <clears throat> a brief basic overview of solar energy and um, our process for making our solar array. Okay, starting off just basically what are solar cells? Um, they're things that make light into electrical energy. Um, <clears throat> We use monocrystal and silicon solar cells, meaning that they are cut from one big crystal or ingot of silicon, um, as opposed to like polycrystalline, which is multiple, it's kind of smushed together, or thin film that sometimes use amorphous silicon. Um, <clears throat> there are also other types of solar cells that use different materials, like gallium arsenide um, solar cells, or... Um, like perovskite ones or organic ones. However, those are either really expensive or still in development, so <clears throat> not really commercially available. Okay, so for these commercially available conventional solar cells, which are made from silicon, uh, how do they? How do we make them into actual energy? So first, um, in its crystal structure, which looks like this, but tetrahedral in 3D. Um, this, each silicon atom is bonded to two other silicons in a pattern that looks like this, but as I said, tetrahedral 3D, because this is two-dimensional, so you can't exactly convey everything. However, you can't just put this in light and hope that it makes energy. So what we do is we dope it. Um, so there's two different sides to a solar cell. Because it's a diode, it has an N-doped and a P-doped side. So on the N-doped side, negatively doped, there's going to be an extra electron. So a group 5 atom, usually phosphorus, is put in this silicon structure. Um, and then on the P-doped side, positively doped, um, there's going to be a group 3 atom, um, which is going to have one less electron, and it's going to mean that there's one less bond or one less electron, and, we're and we just call it a hole, but it's really just a lack of an electron. But we say that it moves around like anything else, what, even though it's just the things around it moving around. Anyways, so when we put those together, the N-type and the P-type silicon together, um, that creates what's called a P-N junction. And that's what makes a, um, what main, that allows us to actually make energy. Um, so basically, when you put those together, the spot in the middle where they're ne very near each other or touching is what's called the depletion zone. And in that zone, the holes and the um, electrons are going to like come together and like f um, and basically make it so that the there are the proper amount of electrons in the structure. However, because we have different types of atoms there. Um, one side, the n-type, is going to have is going to be positively charged, whereas the p-type, um, which originally um, had holes, is now going to be negatively charged because it has those extra electrons. Um, so when that happens, it creates um, electrical potential. It creates an electric field in that depletion zone. And when sunlight hits that, hits the solar cell, the electrons in the um, silicon are ejected which results in formations of holes again. And when those electrons move and you connect the two of the n-type and the p-type size, it creates a circuit and electrons are gonna move and that's what electricity is. Um, that's basic, there's more complicated like physics and math involved, but that's the basic gist of it. So for us, like this, now we're getting into like our process um, and putting it together. So first off, we get a bunch of solar cells. We use um, Maxian Sun Power solar cells, and um, and we just get the raw cells. So then we have to put them together. So we can we solder them together, and most of ours are in series. And these connections have to be good because, as with any other circuit, you want it to be like closed so that electricity can flow. Um, yeah, it's a long process to do all of this. There's about six connections per cell. Um, and when you're doing, like, hundreds, it takes a while. Um, then after we've done this, we move on to testing them. Now, we don't exactly, we don't have a way of testing for their exact power output before we, like, actually have them done. But we have ways of kind of trying to predict that. 
and seeing like defects that we can fix. So we use electroluminescence testing using an electroluminescence te um, camera that we built. So solar cells, like pretty much any other electrical thing, um, can do its opposite function. So it can turn electrical energy back into light. Um, so when you, um, just like an LED actually. So when you put power through the solar panel, um, it actually lights up, just not in wavelengths that we can see. But with our electroluminescence camera, we can see an in infrared, and that's the wavelength that our solar panels emit. So you can see on this top picture, as an example, this is not a very good um, panel. This was actually our panel um, from one of our panels from 2021. Um, and as you can see, there's many poor connections with which result in this dark spot like this. Um, there's cracks that look like this. Um, and then there's just like assorted dark spots. And these aren't good. They're all going to make our performance worse because if, um, if electricity can't get to these parts and make it light up, that means when um, sun hits and it produces energy, it has nowhere to go. Um, so what we want is we want uniform and bright cells like these. These are some examples of ones we made um, before they were connected more. But So we see that it's uniform and bright. So yeah, so once we've done that and gotten, um, and we know that these panels are decent, we have to laminate them because without lamination, they'd be incredibly fragile, they'd weather, and they would die very quickly. So most conventional or commercial solar panels have a glass top sheet, EVA encapsulant, and a polymer back sheet. However, glass is heavy, so we need to use something else. So we use um, ETFE, um, EVA, and PET. So ETFE is our top sheet. It's, um, our top sheet is very thin, and it has a very good um, refractive index, so not a lot of light is absorbed by it. Then EVA, same as capsulin as other um, solar panels. It's just like glue. And then our back sheet, slightly thicker than our front sheet, and we just use PET, which is like polyester. Um, and then we, it's just laminated with heat and pressure. Um, and yeah, and that's basically it. So, and then once we're done, we cut them out and stuff. But yeah, that's basically all there is to it. Um, if you want to know more, I would contact me. And because we are going to need people for making um, solar panels this year. So contact me if you're interested. And yeah, thank you.